And we are rolling, Pikachu. That's right, my executive producer, my studio audience. Drinker is the running the console back there in the studio booth. The whole production here from our Boston studios, which is down the street from the corner. Welcome to the Comics Talk with Reverend Sully, your dojo for tactical and practical spirituality. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. It is time for the Wednesday preview show. That's right. When we take a look at all the funny books, the comic books that are coming out this week that will be available on the shelves of your local comic book shop. And uh, how are you doing? We do a twice weekly pop culture show about mostly about comic books. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. It's um, it's good to have you with us. We are a um, mostly positive, of, but you know, with room for you know outrage because it's you know it's out there and uh, it's in here and it's got to get out and you got to get rid of that outrage. It's new comic book day. Uh, let's see how many comic books are available to us the purchasing public we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen that's eighty plus forty that's one hundred and twenty one different periodical publications available for purchase on the shelves of our of the of the direct market what is out there well we go to uh to somewhere called league of comic geeks dot com where we get um our preview page and um there we go in nice little rows of eight we have tricked out here and the order how they're um most ordered i believe that is the um the sort here mm-hmm is it a big week? How many things will be on my um, my pull list? Oh, good to see. And I'm already seeing a few that are not on my pull list, but I will be picking up. I've also, um, oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh, facsimile issues. Well, as we always do, we're going to start off at the bottom of the list in just a minute. Um, welcome to the show. Um we are in the process of being verified for monetization. We made it over our 4,000 view hours. I applied on Monday, and we'll we'll be uh, we'll be sorting that out. How are we going to enjoy monetization? I think at the beginning, I'm just going to go for ads. Uh, I'll I'll think about memberships. I'll think about maybe a store. I would you know I would like. I have a pretty nifty logo that I designed myself. And I would just, would you like your own t-shirt of the super mantra of the super ohm? That is, you know, um, the, you know, that this is, that's my super mantra. I'm putting the, I put this on t-shirts. I've, I drew this, um, with, with colored pencils and, um, it's in the iconic, color scheme of the Superman logo. It's a stylized Om. Om is a holy Hindu syllable. Um, I've seen this design before with different looking, more traditional looking Ohms. The Om is a letter. It's, it's a word in Sanskrit. And uh, I gave it a bit more of a swooshing definition to follow the the organic lines of the at the whirls and loops of the s's in superman's original chest logo and um this goes really well on a white t-shirt um and uh, I, I i love my logo i mean it's been um it's just i, I that's yeah I, i'm in love with my logo i'm branding yo but if you'd like, uh, you know, maybe one day we're going to get a link to a T-shirt that you can make for that. And um, that would be cool, huh? It's for, and we, we do this, this is pre-recorded, just to let you know, pre-recorded before a live studio audience of my stuffed animals. It's 4 p.m. 
Wednesday afternoon, so it's after work. Uh, have one. Have a cold one. And, um, and keep it real. So, yeah, we have 121 different periodical publications available to us this very week. Um, and a big part of this show is to get you to get your ass out of your seat and back out on the to the street and to go to your local comic book shop, wherever it may be. There is one around you, hopefully. And if there's not one around you, then hopefully we can help each other out here. Uh, there are deets in the details. Talk to Yule Carter of Fantastic Comics in Berkeley, California. Uh, I've shopped with him several times already, and I have another order in too. That just you know, we just accumulate. He gets me some. He gets me some specials. You know what I mean? And things that I may have missed. And um, um, at my local comic book shop. And so he's a local comic book shop to me. The entire continent away. You know, he's in the Bay Area. And now we're in the Haba. Here in uh, the Haba. Here in Boston, Massachusetts. United States of America. Down the street from a Dunkin' Donuts. And that's, that's not a lie. There's, the Dunkin' Donuts are everywhere around here. That's right there. Snap ahead. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So here we go. Let's look at some comic books. We got Nightwing 113 written by Tom Taylor. Uh, and it also Marv Wolfman, too. This is Legacy issue 300. And we've got five variant covers. There's a Virgin variant cover for this Bruno Redondo. Um, let's see. Dan Mora. I like that one because it's got it includes Robin and it's and especially because Dan Moore is in charge of the visual look of Robin over on um, World's Finest and World's Finest Teen Titans where he's aged up Robin a, a couple more years than this one here. Um, this is a very gold and silver and uh, um, bronze copper age looking Robin. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um, that's a nice cover. And that's Dan Mora. Good pencils. Let's see, come on. Here's a Jamal Campbell cover. <laughs> we got night wings everywhere. And this one's pretty cool, too. Uh, Surga Cunha. This is the uh, classic Nightwing version one costume um, with the collar. That's pretty cool. That's a Jim Lee. This, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Lee right here. Okay. There are Jim Lee covers with Brad Anderson. So we don't have Scott Williams inking Jim Lee as is, um, as is their usual battery pairing. And here's that Bruno Redondo Virgin cover here. It's just a bunch of Scott Adams type, uh, Scott Adams, Scott McLeod, Scott McLeod, is it? Yeah, Scott McLeod's understanding comics, sequential panels, that kind of thing of showing motion. And but listen, look, look, look here. We have like two, six, 12, 18, 24, 36. Wow. And, and then like, look, you have all these sequential uh, uh, panels. Of Nightwing in motion, the gymnast, the uh, you know, the acrobat. He's an acrobat. We all know that's Nightwing. We haven't even looked at like the landmark 300th issue since 1940s. You've seen him go from acrobat to orphan, from Dick Grayson to Robin, from Robin to Nightwing. You've seen him work uh, alongside the universe's most powerful heroes against existence's most sinister villains. You have seen Dick Grayson do so many things, but now in his 300th issue. You will see him. Well, you'll just have to pick up the issue and find out. Join us for this Legacy 300 milestone. I might pick this up, depending on if there is one of those variant covers out there. You could, you know, pretty much get me interested. Speaking of Dan Mora, um, Dan Mora does the uh, is doing all the art duties here, and it's a um, it's Batman Superman who's world's finest, written by Mark Wade. And uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six variant covers. That's right. And um, 
No, look, let's look at some Salvador La Roca art. That's what Salvador La Roca art looks like, not light box freeze frames of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. That's got some, you know, line organic line to it, some flair, you know. I've got a and Jim, here's that Jim Lee cover again. Jim Lee and um let's take a look at that. With, with who? Wait a second. No, 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 no. We're going back. We're going back to the Devrod system. We'll back. I blew that up with Peter Steinwald. So, yeah, so they're mixing it up with different anchors for Jim Lee's work here, which is, I find interesting because if you like Jim Lee's work, then you know that Jim Lee and Scott Williams go together like cookies and cream. Um, they are a combo. And usually together, too. I mean, let's see. Superman number 13. Superman is on my poll list. This is part two of House of Brainiac. I am um, also reading Green Lantern. That's on my poll list. And I've been picking up Action Comics. So apparently I am in for House of Brainiac. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven variant covers for an issue 13. Let's see. Go. Let's see. Find that Jim Lee one. Here we go. And it's odd. Oh, and it's and it's a Bizarro. Jim Lee inked with Alex Sinclair. So like each inker, you know, brings their own style to every penciler, and that's just the way art goes in comic books. And um, this is also. Superman 13 will fit next to Action Comics 1064 and uh and, and, a, and a connecting cover. You got Miles Morales Spider-Man number 19, two variant covers written by Cody Ziegler. It's not bad. Okay, I've been reading this for maybe about six issues or so consecutively. It's usually part of my um digital pirate chest. And um it's not bad, okay? And it's just it's not just it's not it's not great, but it's it's a perfectly it's a perfectly serviceable Marvel comic to be on the spinner rack with all the other Marvel comics, you know? It, it's up it's it's like up there with your power fit uh, you with your power man and iron fists, you know, or your Marvel two in ones. It's just like yeah, that's cool. or, or your moon knight, you know, geez, like the, it's it's um it's Perfectly fine. I mean, there's Titans number 10, written by Tom Taylor, um, with art by Lucas Mayer. Let's see. Let's look for that Jim, that Jim Lee variant. There is no Jim Lee variant for Titans 10. We're getting into some good old slap fashion kind of slugfests with um, the Trigon, I guess. What's up with Raven? I mean, hey, I mean, I thought that it's actually kind of interesting to see, like, you know, Raven has a heel turn. Raven, you know, the Titans have always had some kind of theme of, of a turncoat. Will, who, who will win the struggle for Raven's soul? Who, you know, and... Um, who is pulling the strings? The Titans are committed to helping humanity, whether humanity believes in them or not. And um, yeah, we've got yeah three variant covers. Are you reading Titans? Are you entertained? How about Wonder Woman number eight by Tom King and uh, Daniel Samper? There are um, three variant covers for this issue eight. And it's four ninety nine. Thirty six pages has a uh, a Trinity backup. Trinity is the next generation Wonder Woman, Lizzie Prince, and uh, it's World's Finest Part Five, written by Tom King, and art by ba uh, so it's got two back. Oh yeah, the no, World's Finest Part Five. That's a Balin Ortega's art, and it's. Uh, it's basically it's cutesy utsy stuff, and um, good on Tom King for writing it. It's been entertaining, and it's usually slices of life 
in in her growing up and uh, having John Kent and Damian Wayne as her big brothers. And so they're going to be the tr uh, the trinity of the next generation, you know. So is this any good? Wonder Woman num numbers one through seven with all the notoriety and the outrage and the this and the that, you know, I'll give it, you know, six and a half or seven out of 10. I usually don't give numbered ratings because I really don't have a good, you know, it's a personal thing. You know, my, my friends who do other shows, they do numbered ratings. And that's something I really kind of shied away with because it's like, well, well the one through five, like a five star rating be better than a, a 10 point scale. The 10 point scale, though, is synonymous with comic books because that's, you know, what we do with uh, with judging a funny book. You know, like if you got a corner or if you got some spine roll, you know what I mean? This just all take away from the, the pristine 9.2 you probably bought it off the shelf with, you know, and um, it's only a 10.0 has probably never been touched. Never been opened. It just went right into a slab, you know. And um, so this is uh, – it hasn't been bad. And I also – because I, I go, I've been going to bat for Tom King and the Penguin as well. I mean, however, that might be just 12 issues. Remember, issue one of the Penguin started off in Medios Res. It, it trapped with, uh, um, you know, with wing dings, with – uh, there was you know, Batman and Penguin are in a sink are in a bat wing plane that is in Gotham Harbor and it's sinking and Batman's injured and can't save them. And Oswald Cobblepot's like tied to the seat. So they're about to drown and they have their final moment together. And of course, there's a wing ding where Oswald calls Cobblepot says, fuck you, Bruce. You know what I mean? Which is a kind of it's an admission that Cobblepot knows his identity. But also it shows this secret history between the Batman and the Penguin. How the how the Penguin has always been kind of like this Whitey Bulger and the FBI and a secret informant. So he was allowed to keep his racket as long as he didn't go over the top. And he also had a show like, you know, he is, you know, one of Batman's rivals to keep up the mystique of it. So I kind of like that. And then it goes like really the throat too, as a twin, like a Quentin Tarantino kind of uh, movie. Ultimate Black Panther is uh, I'm, I'm not buying this and I probably won't buy the upcoming ultimates by Hickman as well. I, I'm a little bit gun shy of Hickman. I, I am already buying his, his ultimate Spider-Man. That's going to be good enough. All right. Um, we get back to that. We've got four variant covers, including a Peach Momoko design variant of Storm, one of my most favorite characters. I will ask my comic book shop if they have this, and I will just buy this simply for this cover. That is Aurora. That is my that is my X Men. That if if you've been listening to this channel long enough, who is Sully's favorite X Men? It's it's Aurora. And um, I would just enter Storm and Killmonger. This is great. It's actually using the action figures in the in a, in a nice way. Um, Avengers Twilight number five has been very entertaining. Uh, it's got six variant covers here. And um, I, I wonder how, how many issues this will go. Six. This is going to go six issues. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's, it's basically a trade paperback. You know, being told it's, it's, so it's got to be the beginning of Act Three in our end game of the story, and it's set in this Dark Knight Returns kind of future, and it hasn't been all that bad. I love it, Daniel Acuna's art. I'm just not buying it. We've got Spawn 352. I thought the last issue was great. I'm not a Spawn reader, but I'm a. Uh, I'm tuned into this. I'm also tuned into all these X-Men comic books too. So hopefully I've read this already with my, um, with my Marvel pirate chest and it's uh follow the house of X number four. This is by Jerry Duggan and um, wow. How many variant covers, huh? We've got six, eight, nine variant covers. Uh, this is going five issues. And 
this is like besides X Men, all of Duggan's Duggan's doing the heavy. This is Duggan's. This is Duggan's crisis event. This is Duggan's Jerry Duggan's X event. He's the author of this volume six of X Men. Um, he's also doing Incredible uh, Invincible Iron Man, and a couple of these tie-ins. Kieran Gillen is also doing like you know, he's playing bass to Jerry Duggan's lead guitar. I would, you know, I'd like to put it that way, you know, stylistically. Um, it's the end of the Krakoan age. And so, yeah, I'm just, just here to re, you know, I'm glad I'm in, I'm, I'm tuned into this stuff. You know, we've got spectacular Spider-Man number two uh, with art by Umberto Ramos, four variant covers. This is going to be a, this is going to be a trade paperback. We got four issues. It's only solicited up to four issues, so that's you know that's fine. And uh, yeah, that spectacular Spider-Man. I read the first issue. It was kind of annoying, but I love Umberto Ramos's art. Catwoman sixty-four. This is one I've had my eye on. It's this is Nine Lives issue number part six. I wonder if this is the end of Nine Lives. Let's see. Uh, no, Nine Lives is going on for a couple more issues at least. Um, hopefully, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying the heck out of this. It's Catwoman issue 64. This is written by Teeny Howard. We get art by uh, Carmine G. Diamenico. And uh, wow, how many? we've got five, eight variant covers. We have a Jim Lee variant cover. Behold, in the Kelly Jones kind of of uh, Batman, vampire Batman style. Look at that. This is uh, Jim Lee with ink by Alejandro Sanchez. How can and you can tell for look at those ears? Oh, that's fucking great. And look at that. Look at that. Selena. Is he protecting her? Is he about to bite her on the neck? You know, uh, and I love the, the, the oval. Oh, this is a, that's really nice. That's a really nice variant cover. And like, you know, because like, hey, we you know that there's plenty of bashing of, of of writers and, you know, Teeny Howard gets her due, you know, and uh, but I will say I've been a fan of this particular run of Catwoman post Gotham Boar. I mean, Gotham War, um, you know. Mm. Let's see, where did that go? Where did my cursor go? Oh my goodness. There. Sorry about that. Oh my goodness. Here. Cheers. Here's to you, my little loves, with blessings from above. Now let the day begin. Let the day begin. Let the day start. Uh, what else is out today? Dead X Men number four. Um, this is written by Kieran by Steve Fox. This is a five issue mini. Um, no, this is a four issue mini. So this is the last issue. Thank God. Everything ends. Prodigy, Dazzler, Frenzy, Cannonball, and Jubilee have gone farther and risked more than any X-Men team before. And now at the end of everything, the final fate of Krakoa rests on these five mutants. Will the dead X-Men save the seed of the future or kill it before it can even be planted? This has been... Um, it's been pretty boring. It's a, uh, there you go. That's the fall of the house of X. Um, th th that's what you're getting. Digital art, digital screen tone effects, um, minimal effort. I mean, like this is, I mean, I don't, Hey, I, I'm not here to, I'm not here to, 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 to make a, a creators to hurt a creator's feelings. I mean, they're telling a story. It's not for me. Um, it's not, in my opinion, diluting any product because 
Um, it's not diluting. Oh, I don't want to show you my match.com page. Why would I do that? It's like this. So who's viewed me? What? Me? What am I going to do? Show my, 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 my match page? What? <laughs> I put in new pictures. And like my unconventional date idea, coffee, sober, and casual. I'm not really interested in drinking with you yet. But yeah, here you go. I'm a proud geek. I got handsome man feet too. I advertise that. So one of the you know first things a chick's gonna judge you on is like your your shoes. You know, you look at me. I'm, I've got. Um, I've been. I'm a chef. I've been on my feet for thirty years. I take good care of them. As a thank you, he's like, I respect my feet. I love my feet. And I'm going to take as good as care of them as I possibly and bodily can. And uh, that means ped uh, manicure, pedicure day. <laughs> man, I don't care what you think. I grew up in a house full of all women, man. I like these little, like, you know, shit, man. You ever live with a woman? Ever live with a woman? I've lived with three of them. I mean, I, you get... I get turned on to really nice smelling hand soaps. So I've got like my my my, my peach melba bath and body work shit that's in my bed uh, in, my, in my bathroom. Fuck you. I mean, like I like the way it smells, man. Uh, these like three sided nail things. It gets your nails looking nice and like a little glossy. I mean, you just like da 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 and like you know, hey, I I. I handle food. I make food videos and I get close-ups of my hands too, handling, you know, funny books. I'm doing this all day. You want to see like grubby, chewed fingernails? No. You want nice looking hands, you want nice looking feet, look nice. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? What does this have to do with comic books? We've got five covers all day for Cobra Commander number four of five. I am loving this book. Joshua Williamson is just hitting it, uh, you know, inside the park. He's getting base hits. He's getting uh, on base percentage. He's getting runners in scoring position over the plate. This is great. Cobra Commander number four is just one over the top battle after another. Who's dead? Who's alive? What matters? It's a new play. It's it's great use of the action figures. Oddly toyetic. I love this book. And it's got a Annabella uh, Andrea Milana is the um, is the artist for this book, and this cartooniness, this frantic cartooniness, really works for this story. And I like what's going on. I like what's going on over at Duke as well. And then after this, we get both Scarlet and Destro, and maybe after that, we'll get you know Zartan and Snake Eyes. You know, and who would be your two favorite shows? I would, I want, uh, I would want Ace and Wild Weasel. You know what I mean? The, the pilots, you know, the, 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 the famous salute, you know, that was just, you know, I've had both of those toys when I was 11 and 12. I had a Rattler and a Sky Striker. Be oh. jealous. I, I've earned your jealousy, your geek jealousy with that. Not just for my fabulous display of my star fleet, <laughs> of enter all the enterprises that matter. And if there was an Enterprise G, I would totally get one. Uh, I hope there is an Enterprise G because you have a home here among the rest, <laughs> the Stargazer and you know, the, the Titan A. You know, spoilers. <laughs> mm. What else is out today? Spider Boy number six. By Dan Q. Slot, but you know, Slot Ob Octavius. No, they gave a lot of you know. I've I, I am famous. I am internet famous. You're probably here because I burned the Dan Slot comic book a couple of years ago when I found out that I was unfairly blocked by him just for some weird adjacency or some weird Twitter judgmental stuff. 
And it, it began me on this voyage of anger and of realizing this anger that still lives in my heart. Nothing gets me angrier than having uh, a better than you, good guy, comic book creator, block you on Twitter for 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 really bogus reasons. I understand if like, like I keep coming back to Tom King. He's the only creator that I ever deserved it because I gave him such a rash of shit. I don't give creators shit. I'm part of this pop culture comic book YouTube space. I would like to have a little bit of credibility because I have a comic book show. I'm on a comic book show. I'm on Wes's show on Saturdays. I've, I've been on two panels with the legendary writer, Mike Barron. I've been on a panel with legendary Spider-Man rain artist, Kari Andrews, um, and, and with Eric Kennedy, you know, he, who's doing arc, his own Arc Athena now. Amazing artists. And so there's like, there is a quell of credibility to this. And like the fact that I'm just, you're the, you know, that gets me going. So with this, yeah, we're going to talk about a Dan Slott comic book. It's Spider Boy number six. And you got a couple of variant covers, like the, the vampire variant cover. There's a Peach Momoko variant. See, I'm a sucker for a Peach Momoko cover. Would I get this just for the... I would probably get this. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I would... I am a... There are a few of these Peach Momoko covers that I would not get. This is solicited at least up to ta uh, issue eight. And it's probably going a little longer than that, too. You got a Scotty Young variant over here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but Spider Boy has been entertaining. Dan Slot can write good Spider stuff. All right, you don't have to convince me. You're gonna have to unblock me though to get me to spend my money with you, Mister Slot. I will never, ever, ever put my dollar in in your hand willingly, or even you know what I mean. Um, no, it's a, that's not that's a non-starter. You know what I mean. You don't have to you know like me to respect me. You know, we got Batman Off World number four of what is this of six of five, and this is Jason Aaron's oh pen ultimate issue. It's going six issues. Okay, um, it's about a younger Batman. It's set in that recent past, not even a recent past too. It's because I mean, I'm, you're gonna have to guess that. I mean, seriously, let's look at DC post Rebirth, DC post Infinite Frontier, post. Um, Dark Crisis, you know, right now, DC, Dawn of DC, going into absolute power. And the word absolute there is the key because it's, I think the, it's going to birth the absolute universe that Jeff Johns is going to captain. It's going to be the DC version of the, their ultimate universe. Sure. Why not? Go for it. Um, but it's set in this years ago past, like a, a year two or three i think this is this would be about a year two or three batman story uh, alfred's most definitely still alive and i think it's pre dick grayson robin and it's just the problem solving batman who realizes that he's going to have to learn how to beat up He's gonna to have to learn how to beat up aliens and know where their weak points are. You have to he's gonna to have to expand his his martial arts. <laughs> um Green Lantern War Journal number eight, the only Philip Kennedy Johnson book I'm not currently buying. Um Montas is you know consistent, at least he's still he's been on the book the entire time. He's got really tight line art. I think we lose a lot of it in the garish coloring. Uh, like when I use words like garish coloring, I don't mean to insult Mr. Lucas here. I'm not, I don't, once again, I'm not here to punch down on creators. I'm here to just, you know, I'm either buying books or I'm not buying books. I read enough books that I have an opinion and I've been reading them long enough. I've been reading Green Lantern War Journal since it was the backup feature uh, in the first couple of issues of Jeremy Adams' Green Lantern, you know, um, so it's like it, it has been a cohesive, tight story for John Stewart, and I'm really, you know, I like that. I like that a lot. 
Um, so if you think Guy Gardner's dead in the pages of the canonical Godzilla versus, uh, I mean, Je Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong, uh, no, great, great. Guy Gardner is still pretty much alive in the modern now continuity. Uh, Hellblazer, Dead in America, issue four of how many? Of six? Um, it's going six issues. And um, I think, yeah, I think it ends here. Or is this a turning point for the series? So it's either going to end here or it's going to, you know, hopefully keep going. I'm enjoy I'm having fun with this. It's $4.99. It's um, DC Black Label, written by Cy Spurrier. G interesting art by Aaron Campbell. Uh, it's got one variant cover. That's a really nice variant cover. I've been buying this. So I'm in for this for, what, five times six is 30 bucks. You know, uh, so for at least 60 bucks, I mean, 30 bucks. So uh, floppies. Yeah. I mean, that's how sometimes I like to sort my thoughts like that. Like, you know, I'm looking at, you know. I'm looking at something like, you know, like, like, like Wolverine Sabretooth War. I'm, I've bought all seven parts so far. I'm going to get, it's 10 parts at five, at four ninety nine an issue times 10. They've got me for $50. I mean, I think there are only 13 parts to this house of Brainiac. That's including power girl that I might just start getting to be part of this. Um, you know, I had been buying action comics with Philip Kennedy Johnson. I put it down for the past three issues with, um, with Jason Aaron and a Pizarro story. And, um, but yeah, so how many issues? What, 13 times five with that 75 bucks. Um, no, that's. <laughs> Um, that's 65. Yeah. Um, something like that. If they can, if they're, if they're $5 books, who knows? Let's see what else, what else we got going on here? Oops. Oh, we got that. Here we go. It's a flash guy. Jay Garrick flash number six of six, um, by Jeremy Adams, really eye popping art. This has been really fun. It's got the Donna DC trade dress. It's also got this little icon. Here, do you see the eagle? Here, the DC logo. We have issue number six. We have this eagle logo, and it says Adams and, and the rest of the creators here. That is trade dress, and that is to, to denote it as part of the new golden age of something that shares um, a trade dress with the other two minis and Justice Society of America. There we go. Ah, oh, that's really cool. That's a really who did this? Diego or Latugi. That's really nice. I love these. This is you know this is really good superhero stories by Jeremy Adams. He's been like you know earning his spot. Here we got Ghost Rider, uh, Final Vengeance number two. Welcome to your new Ghost Rider. Would it be spoiling? To say who it is. Yeah, I'll keep it like as unspoiler free as much as possible. But I was there for those first issues of this character 20 odd years ago. And uh, it's interesting. Spider Woman number six. Um, that's a Lennel U cover. That's, I love his artwork. He draws a really nice, he draws a nice, thick Jessica Drew. I appreciate that. Um, and he's a wicked nice guy too. I can't wait to. I I I hope he comes back to Boston. I will. I I'll bring stuff for you to sign this time. Maybe some issues of like, like New Avengers or you know, like uh, I I just that, that was my some of my favorite little you. Who was back in that like you know we got okay here's one of here is a Peach Momoko variant cover that I'm not going to get. This is what if Venom. Um, this is issue three of What If Venom, and um, yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm not yeah. I mean, I, I I draw the line there. I mean, like, I'm just not interested in that. So we get it's What If Venom, and it's got we have a mashup now 
with the with the symbiote supreme this the uh with doc strange so we're getting different mashups issue one was a mashup of venom and she hulk issue two is a mashup of venom and logan wolverine and um so i guess issue three here is a mashup of venom what if the symbiote had steven strange we got Roxon presents Thor number one, which is just completely meta because this is not issue 12 of uh, Mortal Thor. This is the issue that of the comic book that is in Thor, I think 10 and 11 or 11 and 12, uh, something like that. And um, <laughs> I think that's cute. I think that's really fun. Uh, you know, hey, give me some fun in the, my funny books. That's really, you know. Um, oh, Jesus. Captain Marvel number seven by Fuel is so long. Sorry. Oh, my God. This is when will this story end? At, at issue nine? Um, maybe, maybe that's, you know, it's you only got seven more issues. Till issue 200 so maybe they're just going to keep going with this you know what i mean you have to give her a job right yeah and just, 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 I, I read every issue of this that i'm given in my pirate chest and just, this is like oh gosh like, well, helen of windhorn number two dark horse comics um amazing art by bill quiss ever uh, evely um really tight line work here uh and it's tom king doing a non superhero related story so he can be as he can do anything he wants over there he can at least you know he can you know by definition he can write a standard comic book serialized you know graphic novel kind of things <laughs> more tom king here animal pound i i you know i just I didn't boom studios but hey there you go get some indie comics there's, there's two from tom king right there he's doing another one we call it like what love 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 everlasting is that it okay well here's mace windu star wars number uh, mace windu number three this is by mark bernadin um George Anti, Dexter Vines, and um it's I like the character, it's just um yeah, it's doing nothing for me. Yeah, sorry. Giant sized Hulk number one, Brian Hitch, Phil Kennedy Johnson, and so um wow, I might have to get this. Because this might be like, wow, and it's got a reprinting of Incredible Hulk 372 by Peter David and Dale Mc, Dale Keown. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is going to have to matter with uh, his the Phil Kennedy Johnson's overstory over at Hulk. So, yeah, I guess you're getting you. I didn't even know. Yeah, Moon Man number two. Written by Kill, uh, Kid Cudi and Kyle Higgins. Um, I got Moon Man one. Is this going five issues? Might. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll go six. I don't know. I don't know. We got three variant covers. Really nice looking variant covers, too. I liked issue one well enough. Will I be back for issue two? We'll find out Sunday. Because Sunday... Oh, that's why. Okay. Because Sunday is a new, new release review day. Come and enjoy the usually live cast. Unless I have something else going on that day. You know, a hot date with your mom hot you know i have to respect that you know um 
let's see. What else do we have out there? Kill Your Darlings, Image. I've read a lot. Actually, i got a sweet image and a sweet dark horse pirate chest this week. And I, I really appreciate because I like looking at the design of these books. And these are definitely books I would never have picked up, you know, unless I was exposed to it here. Here's one that I'll be picking up because uh, if it's on the shelf, it's not on my list. It's not on my pull list, but um, I've been the one who's been buying it off the shelf at my bookstore. So it's going, what, six issues? It's Garth Ennis. And maybe it's going beyond six issues. Who knows? But it's just, it's Garth Ennis playing in a different box of toys, in a different toy box. Instead of, you know, so it's it's got the over top, the topness of his Punisher with Steve Dillon, and, which was also inked by Jimmy Palmiotti. Those were just that was some those are some you want some good books you want a recommendation try anything Marvel Knights from Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon and and Jimmy Palmiotti, um, the Punisher. <laughs> Welcome back, Frank. Um, it's it's over the top, hyper violent, silly, cartoony, satirical, written by this mad uh, the, the, the the mad Irishman himself. Who, if you like the boys on Amazon Prime, you have no one to blame but Garth Ennis. I mean, he's, he's a really good art. He's a really good writer uh, in that sweet spot of the second British invasion. You know, Gaiman, Warren Ellis, you know, just Garth Ennis, Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, just like the whole kit and caboodle. I'm probably missing a whole bunch of the Pat Mills. Um, just, just, you know, just please forgive me for, for not, you know, it's just that we only have so much time on the show. But uh, Garth Ennis, wonderful, wonderful. Um, I don't know how he is as a human being. I hear he hates superheroes and uh, the fans, too. It's something. But that's, I don't know. I mean, you know, um, you never know. Maybe one day he'll be uh, at a con and I can meet him and be like, hey, there's a Irish bar across the street. You want to grab a pint? And you want to tell me about Hitman? I love Tommy Moore. Tommy Monahan, can I hit, and not the hat, and, and Baytor. I mean, can we can you just <laughs> you want to talk about? <laughs> can, I, can I talk to you about Hitman? I love that book, Star Trek number nineteen. This is don't know what kind of ship that is. Like we got Cisco, and we've got Doctor Crusher, and so this is the the USS Theseus. And uh, oh, it's it's Lansing and Kelly, and um, it's issue nineteen. It's called Pleroma Part One. And uh, well, way to go! Yeah, we got Lansing and Kelly. You know, and it's Captain Cisco, Captain Benjamin Cisco. He's been he's been reformed his body and he's out of this of the wormhole. He's not he may or may not still be the emissary of Bajor and, and the prophets. If you follow what I'm picking, are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you, are you a Trekkie? You, you know, Trekkies are welcome here. Beware the planet of the apes. That's been pretty fun. Star Wars A High Republic, Saber for Hire, number one, written by Kevin Scott. Look, no, it's it's on Dark Horse. So we have Disney on the cover, you know, as part of the trade dress. Let's look at this. this is issue one. This is High Republic Adventures. Okay, but let me tell you, the um, the opening page, which is the info dump page, which is always done in the font and style of the opening crawl. Of a Star Wars movie, if it's it's part and parcel with the whole thing. I mean, she's got a purple lightsaber, and look at that hilt. You know, this is called saber for hire, but it's like set smack dab a year after the destruction of the Starlight Beacon, and this whole thing going on with the Nil. Everything that is in current continuity over on the Marvel comics. Of 
of High Republic. So why wouldn't this just be in part of the Marvel? It's written by Kevin Scott too, who is one of the Marvel writers. And um, why not just, why couldn't this have been set in a different part of the Marvel Star Wars High Republic universe? Can't like, it's, it, these are supposed to be adventures. So why couldn't, Why couldn't, you know, you set this in a different era, like way before, like maybe like in the, the beginning of the High Republic where like you're assembling the Starlight Beacon and you're, you're, you're showing them how much, you know, we're going to put all of our hope into this and we're going to have something that's going to last generations. We're going to be planting trees that we will never rest under shade. Like these, you know, noble Jedi. But with, you know, that we have the the irony of knowing that the Starlight Beacon will fall under the nil. And, you know, <laughs> maybe they've already done that. So uh, that sounds like, you know, you never know. Penthouse Comics number two, not interested. You know, and I don't know. Give me some... Is, it, any new is there if there's some new Milo Manara in there? Yes. If there's a Peach Momoko variant cover, yes. I mean, I like erotic art. It's, it's only been solicited for three issues. And um and it's got it's an anthology thing showing off the you know, the prowess of certain you know, artists. I mean, that's just great. Great tight lines there. Great, you know, form. Classic beauty. I'm, I'm a fan of that. Let's see. Anything else? Oh, okay. Here's it. Here's one. Um, Quick Stops, vol uh, Volume 2, Number 4. And this is, I okay. This is written by Kevin Smith himself. This is, uh, you know, art by uh, Ahmet Rafat, and it's, it's this is like a really easy to get into comic book, especially if you're a fan of the Askew verse of Kevin Smith, of which I thought that Clerks Three was a real letdown. I get Clerks Three. I'm a huge fan of Kevin Smith uh, and of the Excuvers, okay? And I have been half my life for, you know, it's just, yeah. But Clerks 3 was made after his heart attack. And so we have a different Kevin Smith now who is just, you know, he's, he survived something, you know. He's not supposed to be here, you know, and... Uh, so remember, Tusk was made before his heart attack as well, his horror movie. So now he's, I've seen two of his movies, you know, post heart attack. One of them was um, Jane Silent Bob reboot, and then Clerks 3. And they both suffer from the same sentimentality and lack of ribald uh, viciousness. And lewdness because there was a lot of dirty jokes in the earlier books and things that would be considered problematic, you know. Um, so this is the last issue of this volume. Um, and it's set snugly right after Jane Silent Bob reboot. Which I think had quirkiness and a charm and a goofiness to it. And Clerks 3, well, I, I get it that Dante is tragedy and Randall is comedy. And they are two parts of Kevin Smith in his auteur's voyage. And maybe just to put the whole idea to rest. I feel like it kind of like, you know, missed it for us classic fans. Because it it couldn't, I that was my biggest fear of 
of Clerks 3 that it's not going to keep its sense of humor post-2016, Me Too, and most definitely not with all the, you know, the TDS out there and the Trump derangement syndrome, which is pretty true. Sorry. You know, I'm not a fan of them, but gosh, the left went fucking batshit. And you want to lead the free world? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um, but yeah, this is Quick Stops Volume 2. And that's that. Anything else? Let's see. We have Amazing Spider Man, Facsimile 255. Ultimate Spider Man number two, third printing with a Peach Momoko cover. I would pass on that. This could get my dollar though. A three ninety nine. It would be the Crisis on Infinite Earths facsimile. I, if you watch the show, you know that I used to have a Crisis long box, a lot, a personal curation of my love affair with this, the Crisis on Infinite Earths, which started being published when I was about 11, 12 years old. And, um, and I had a local comic book shop right in downtown Boston. And it was what, what a wonderful time. It was, yeah. But I could be, this might get a doll. This, uh, <laughs> especially if he's got the ads and stuff. I, just, I love, I love the facsimile issues and that those are like, that's how Marvel and DC are nickel and diming yours truly, personally, here. Now, Mad Magazine 37, I would love to see a new Mad Magazine to check it out. What's it look like? Did its dimensions change? It's 56 pages for five ninety nine, dollars um, And it's issue 37 because it got canceled a, a little over three years ago. And then, but it had a, a you know, a second life here in this newer format so i mean i would love to see a mad magazine just to look at one i grew up on mad magazine that was just part of my formative years you know um i read this one 71 47 number one it's a series premiere first time in newsprint um and it's um, it's artsy, okay. It's science fictiony. Um, I'm glad I read it. I like the design of the book. Um, but it's a miss for me. I won't pick it up. I won't be picking it up. No, no. Uh, let's see. Anything here near the the end of our list here that we're getting. We get Ultimate Black Panther number two, second printing. There you go. Don't miss out on that. My Little Pony. Can, Buck, can Bucky Roller Derby? Indeed. What else we got? Batman First Night, number one, second printing, $6.99. Avengers Twilight number one, third printing. In issue two and a third printing, Crisis on Infinite Earths blank facsimile edition. That's the kind of one you would take to um, to a con and have someone just like draw something on it too. He's got Weapon X-Men number one, second printing. That's interesting. Christos Gage. It's a team of multiverse Wolverines teaming up to, you know. Wow. Ooh. This is, and these second printings are interesting. Um, because you got Wolverine 44 second printing. And that was a couple of weeks ago. It's bi-weekly. 
Let's see. Anything else? Man's Best number one second printing. That's cool. Because I bought the first printing of that. It was a really interesting right. kind of tale. And no, no. Oh, look at all the variant covers. That's nice. You know, Jay Lee. That's great. And it's going four issues at least. The penultimate. It's five issues then. The word penultimate. See, you have ultimate, which means last. Penultimate means the second to last. And anti-penultimate means third to last. There you go. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Uh, I'm tuned in to Man's Best. And that was a suggestion made by one of the, the, the gals, the geeky gals that work at my comic book shop. At my local comic book shop. And I was listening. I, I like that, you know, they care enough to make suggestions. You know, that's nice. Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Men has two second printings. That's eh, sure. Um, Thundercats number three. She got Dutch number three by Joe Casey. Just I'm just not in, I'm not dialed into that one. And uh, I'm a Joe Casey kind of fan. And um, but still, we have like the the the, the, the blister variant cover let's look at this real quick because i love stuff like this this is it's meant to look like oh it's meant to look like an action figure blister pack and i love that i i, I just i get a kick out of that as with the peach momoko variants these could be ones that just you're like oh wow Will you be seduced by this variant cover? You could because you've given yourself permission to, you know, to like variant covers and pick them up, you know, especially those Peach Momoko ones. You never know. Like, I, I could maybe be talked into that What If Venom one. I have no interest in that book whatsoever. But I just like I love the Peach Momoko art, and um, as I gotta say on Wes's this past weekend, um, with issue two of Ultimate X Men, um, I love the art and I love what she's laying down. Yet I've never been a fan of the Shadow King stories. So that always kind of just like, eh, sure, Shadow King. It's, my, it's a boring, boring bad guy for me. Ever since I was a kid, I just skip, I literally skip over all of that Shadow King stuff. I think it's so boring. I mean, oh gosh. I mean, and so here we are. I'm giving Ultimate X-Men this chance it appears we're starting off with Shadow King. And, um, aw. And, um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't edit anything. I, I have a pause button. Finding the pause button was <laughs> transformative for, like, for my content. I... Uh, unfiltered, unscripted, unplanned, unedited, um, from the hip, stream of consciousness. We're going with this. We're making TV shows. Pika is my executive producer. The Canadian Bear is my studio audience. And over there, you will see next to Cecil's hat is the the, uh, the critical drinker plushie who uh, he runs the boom mic, the camera. And the soundboard, that's his, that, 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 that's his, the studios over there, this control board, you know, complete control. And this is the production studio here at our Boston studios. Um, yes. And this episode is pre-recorded before a live studio audience of these stuffed animals. Um, and they're, they're very good at their jobs. I am just the talent. I read everything that my executive producer writes down in the show notes. 
and I still have Sunday show notes. So am I supposed to be re repeating this for content sake? You want me to just rehash this stuff? The C2E2 cancel culture? Sure, why not? Because it's what people are talking about. I mean, what is C2E2? Let's look it up real quick. Doop -doo -doop -doo. Doop -doop -doop -doo. C2E2. Wow. That is your musical interlude. Let's look at C2E2 and its website. And when maybe you'll be get stopped at the door. It's on April 26th, 27th, and 28th at McCormick Place. Where is McCormick? Where is McCormick Place? Chicago. Do I know, you know where it is? Is this like... Where where is it? Oh, oh, it's over there near Chinatown. Oh, okay. It's like the South Loop, the West Loop. But where are we going? I know Chicago a little bit. Oh, is that the McDonald's? What are we looking at, Sully? Okay, go back to C2E2. Okay, let's see. Samoa Joe, Christopher Lloyd, Mads Michelson, Hugh Danny. See all the guests. Or you're not going to see John Malin. Guest of honor is Josh Brolin. Featured guests. Addie Gradenoff. Alyssa Wong. Amy Joe Johnson. God bless you. The pink, the original Pink Ranger. Um Arthur Adams, awesome. Babs Tarr, Ben Temple Smith, awesome. Um, Brandon Sanderson, hmm. Uh, Brian Cook, mm -hmm. let's see. Um, Chip Zdarsky, let's see. Christina Ricci, oh boy. Let's see. Well, Cully Hamner. Hello. Um, Dave, Dave Dorman. Wow. David Finch. Okay. Derek Kirk Kim. He's the one that's doing Last Mermaid. Eddie Campbell. Wow. I'll be going to Fan Expo, Boston, and Frank Joe, um, and Gene Ha, and Wicked Boston Comic Con, Hope Larson. Hi. Let's see. James Tinian, Tiny Onion, Jason Muse, Jay and Silent Bob. Would love it's 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 kind of expensive. Like Jason Sean Alexander, he did uh oh wow, he's amazing work on, on detective comics. What else? Jenny Frisson. Hmm. Artist Alley. Let's see. Who else? This is these are all guests at C2E2. This year. Jorge Jimenez. Ooh. Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Oh, please, God. Thank you. I would please come to Boston. Oh, gosh. That would be so cool. Let's see. Katie Kubert. You know, hey, she's the group editor at DC Comics. She has the keys to the bat, uh, to, to, to Wayne Manor. And, um, Kevin Smith. Okay, Kevin McGuire. Klaus Johnson. Klaus Johnson is great. I've seen him a bunch of times. He 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 likes the uh, the, the circuit. Let's see what else. Matt Michelson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Mark Brooks, cover artist. Maya Hawk. Oh, wow. That's Maya Hawk. You might know her from Stranger Things, but she is the daughter of Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman. And she's in the inheritrix of her mother's beauty and charm and grace. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just, way too you know what i mean i'm just like that's a young person and that's like you know she hopefully she'll go far as a you know an actress and as you know a generational craftsman you know at, the, 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 at this trade god bless her rachel lee cook hello uh, who else rachel rosenberg she has a lot of coloring she's one of those colorists it's a, it's a lot of work her name's everywhere in the credits. Rod Rice. Let's see. So we're not going to see Ethan Van Skyver here. No. Or John Malin or Shane Davis. And, and Anna, that Star Wars girl, got her press pass taken away out of this. Um, and remember, you know, just... That's just... Wow. So these people... Stephanie Phillips. I... I, I she was sitting next to her. I believe she. I'm not sure. Like, like well, she's sitting next to Brian Azzarello, uh, who may or may not be, uh, uh, you know, her partner. And um, she, she was nice. Yeah, cute. <laughs> I, I'd ask her out. Hi. <laughs> no, all women don't exist. Shut up. Tony Fleeks, Tom Skerritt. Awesome. Uh, Tony S. Daniel, hello. He's a great artist. Uh, who else? We got Veronica Cartwright. Totally, you. I would love for you to sign my copy of Alien. Oh my God, Ver and 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 and, 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 and Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh Scream Queen. Seriously. Oh God, that that's. Please come to Boston. Who canceled? Oh, Chris Claremont canceled. And but how about canceled by C2E2? How about like a thing of shame? Like if you dare come in, like, you know, if you dare, like, you know, be like, a, you know, a, against our ideology, you're not welcome here. But yeah, I mean, where's McCormick Place? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm looking at Chicago where this place is. It's um uh, okay. Because I, I, I usually stay at the loft on uh, on uh, on um, not Lake. Um, was it State? Jeez, oh, it'll come back to me like at five in the morning. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, the uh, it's called River North. That's where I usually stay, like in Chicago. And so. C2E2 is closer to the south side. You're just asking for trouble. And, and it's uh, 10 days. Buy tickets now. Let's look at my con. Fan Expo Boston. screen i will share this experience with you as much as i can 59 days see like the dallas fan expo is the weekend before this and i am already going this is my city my town it's it's moved venues from the seaport which i hate going to 
to um, the Heinz Convention Center, which you know I I prefer. And um, I'm trying to get like I what I want to do is just like talk to other comic book creators and and get you know like let's go have a beer at Bukowski's across the street and some chili dogs and listen to some, you know just like well, let's just who wants to hang out during like Fan Expo Boston like uh, please Saturday afternoon let's have a very wet lunch <laughs> why not it's like it goes until 7 p.m. or Sunday you know or maybe in the last day I mean, and like we got Marissa Tomei, Rosario Dawson. She was supposed to be there last year and she bailed. Same with Sam Ramy. Okay. So they bailed on us before and here in Boston. So if they come, they come. If they don't, they don't. You know, they're, they're both really amazing artists. You know, Charlie Cox of Daredevil, but Marissa Tomei of, you know, of Spider Man. Yet also there's Vincent D'Onofrio. Kate Mulgrew, you know, I gotta like, oh gosh, I'm such a Star Trek fan. Why not? I have a, I, hello. It's, it's, Oh, you fickle eagle moss! Get back into your base! <laughs> <laughs> Mario Lopez from Saved by the Bell, Beverly D'Angelo from from uh, from National Lampoon's Vacation, and um, in any which way you can. I had the biggest crush on her as a kid. Oh, she's so pretty. Holly Marie Combs. Wow. And the the dude from a so from Ahsoka that played Ezra Bridger. This is it for celebrity guests so far. Okay, let's look at guests, comics, comics creators. Now, Fan Expo Boston's not huge on comics creators. It can be because uh, that's where I met Frank Miller, and but I had you know I had see, actually met more creators at Wicked Boston, and, and it's good to see Sean Murphy too. Uh, let's see, Mark Silvestri, Dan Slott, yeah. What am I gonna do? Talk to you, Tom King? What? Yeah, seriously, like it's like all these people that blocked me. Klaus Janssen, yes, he's always. You know, it's good to see him. Jeremy Adams, please. I'm trying to get him to go to a Sox game. Be like, go to a Sox game with me. Heather Antos, this year I will talk to her. I will say hello, Heather. I just wanted to meet you. You're the big bad, right? You know what I mean? And so, you know, I'm not trying to sucker her into you know just to. Or, or or make her feel you know anything more like I know I wanted to, to hear your voice to, to talk to you like for a minute like you know I guess you had the Star Wars editor you were assistant editor at Star Wars and then volume one 2015 you were like you know can you like are you allowed to talk about this can you tell me why like in 2019 there was you abandoned I would love to ask Heather Antos that because, you know, she was the fucking editor at Star Wars at Marvel Comics with, under Jordan White. I mean, seriously, can, can you tell me why there will there wasn't this this won't this wasn't printed? I mean, or, you know, I would love to ask her that if I if she would be cool with me asking her that, because, like, you know, I would love to, you know, just talk to these comic book people. Seriously. Who else? Um, Doc Shaner. He's got some good shit. And um, let's see. Who else? Scott Larson. Yeah. Just, just, who, I don't know. Yeah. And Cancel Guest. Bill McKay. All right. And then there were like anime voices. All right. And celebrities. Let's just, you know. Yeah. Those are the, we already looked at the celebrities. But Brent Spiner. Will be there, Brent Spiner, um, from Star Trek: Next Generation. I'm gonna pay the money. I'm just a Star Trek fan. I got a picture with Q two years ago. You know, will I get Brent Spiner and Kate Mulgrew? Maybe. Let's see. Guests, animation voices. 
Ashley Eckstein. Yeah. Great Elise. I mean, geez. But also Rob Paulson and Maurice LaMarche. They were pinky in the brain. And the original Jody Benson uh, from, from Little Mermaid. Dee Bradley Baker from, you know, and, and Ashley Eckstein. I mean, seriously. That's Rex and Ahsoka right there. And um, Dee Bradley Baker's so many voices. Like, that's an accomplished voice actor. But then you got anime stuff, too. Like, anime guests. No, not gaming. No, not celebrities. Anime guests. They're huge. Okay, we got... And Kyle Herbert, Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. They have, like, the longest lines. Indeed. Oh, I wasn't showing any of that. Oh, well, good thing we're a podcast, too. And you can sub subscribe to us on podcast and uh, let me know how we're doing over there on podcast. Oh. Awesome. What else have we got? Wicked, are you in Wicked Boston Comic Con? Here we go. A wicked official site. Oh, all right. We're gonna. You're gonna look at this with us. No, not that one. You jerk face. Remove. Present. <laughs> the behind the scenes here is always a uh, a, a bag of of gas. It's a wick. That's Wicked Comic Con. It's gonna be at the um, at the seaport. August 10th and 11th, just, uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I love this con. It's really cool. This is its third annual, and I've been there all three years. And who we got comic book creators showing up so far? All right. Phil Jimenez, Adam Hughes, Michael Golden. Yes, please. Um, let's see. Who else? Joe Prado. Cool. Um, I got to meet Billy Tucci last year. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. Hopefully, they'll get more going, um, as it gets closer to game time. But yeah, those are the two cons that I got planned for myself. And um, that's about it. Yeah. It's new release day. It's Wednesday, new comic book day. What are you picking up? What are you putting down? Let us know in the comment section. Um, thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with us today. Um, we've got... Uh, we'll figure it out if with, with monetization. We will. It's going to... It's happening. So um, we'll see where the show goes. We continue to do com comic book and pop culture stuff, and we will. So uh, thank you so very much for tuning in. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. We will see you again in those funny pages. Ciao. Bye-bye.